ladies and gentlemen, I'll promise you this. We're going to stay the course. And this company is going to continue to grow. Actually, H&H &H was started in 1962. Started on Main Street in Middlefield. A little country store that uh, <clears throat> at that time uh, was starting a family and it was pretty difficult to know. It was a big decision. And uh, my brother-in-law and I decided, well, we were going to take that step and we went into business and uh, started in a little one room building that uh, had a full basement, but we did all the plumbing in the basement, but the upstairs retail area was very small and we were there for a year and a half to two years and then we moved on to a larger larger store and a shopping center and uh, spent several years there and uh, then we proceeded in 1992 built this facility here. This gentleman here, that happens to be my son. He's been a right-hand man for many, many years. It was much easier to retire in 96 when he was here to take over. One of the biggest parts of our store being out in our rural area is what we call our hardware section. You know, the nuts and the bolts and the nails and all the type of fasteners, that's always been good because a lot of the farmers were always mending machinery and things around the farm and some of the kids that were, you know, kids were kids when I was growing up, you know, in here. Now they've got families and they come in here for the fix it up type things. Probably since I was eight, I'm down on Friday night. Worked till nine. You have the car out there? I worked here since I was six. <laughs> Swept or helped customers when I was young too. And at the end of the day, Grandpa and Dad would give us their pocket change. Spent a lot of late nights in here too, especially when we were building it. I generally arrive here about 7.15 in the morning and I uh, unlock the door. I come in and turn the lights on and, and I get the the day money for each drawer in the registers and I open up the registers and usually at that time Tom is here and Tom goes ahead and kind of tidies up the front of the store and sets out the American flag and, and the benches for our customers to sit on and a lot of times the Amish fellas on their way to work will stop here for things that they need for their day's projects and they'll come up and get plumbing or electrical supplies or a lot of times sporting goods we have a, a busy sporting goods division John has been preparing for it, uh, trying to change stock and inventory, keeping in mind basically to stay with service. If you can't compete in one area, we're going to stay with something that uh, is not offered or that you can compete in. Oh, I've probably been shopping here for uh, 32 years or so. All my needs that, that I needed for hardware. The mass merchandisers, to a great extent, do not provide excellence in service. I'll use Walmart as an example, and you're really lucky if they have anyone in the plumbing section who knows anything about plumbing. We've been trying to get ready for them for the last probably 10 years. Had a meeting with all the guys, explained uh, the purpose of our job, make sure we do everything right and thorough, explained what Walmart did and what we do and what we can do different. This was brought to us by a customer of mine. He's so much against the Walmart movement after reading this book that he wanted to get some in and start passing them out or selling them to, to friends and mm -hmm. whatever it cost them. So that's basically, I got a few extra ones. He's, he's taking several and getting rid of them and I'm doing the same. Well, I, I have never been in a Walmart store. I never intended to go in a Walmart store. I've never had the need and uh, I've never liked their principles. Uh, that's not nice to say at all, probably, but uh, I've seen a lot of small communities crucified and forced out ma and pa operations that have been in business for years that are out on the street they just had to close their doors just because of one entity and it appears that that is their intent to come into a community and force everybody out they did nothing but lay down the freaking red carpet for them i know how hard it was for my dad my grandfather to build this building on this lot they went through everything to try to get the commissioners and stuff to allow them to build here. I mean, we had to, you know, they got sign issues, got to be certain size. We had to have, make sure we had enough green around the area. I'm all for free enterprise, but when you look at, at the big picture, they're the, the people who own a company are the richest people in the world. 
Um, so, in reality, I think they could they could spread that out. Uh, I'm curious to see how much they'll actually give back to the community. To even use American with with Walmart in the same sentence, just just I, I don't agree with it at all. It's it's like a Chinese company to me, only with American board members. It's not a mystery. They they come right out on record and said that they don't buy American. And all it's done is give China a better distribution center, whereas before they would have had to find contacts, who to sell to, and, de and develop their own markets. Now they've got a pipeline right in everybody's living room by going through Walmart. I think the government should have more control. You talk about monopolies. If Walmart's not a monopoly, I don't know what is.